Hello, I am Jayantu Chatterjee from IIT Kanpur and we are discussing various aspects of pricing in the B 2 B market particularly with a technology focus. In this session, we are going to discuss about critical underpinning concepts of pricing decisions. Like for example, this is an interesting chart in front of you. If you look at the net sales of an imaginary company, so it is 25,179, it could be anything, it could be dollars, rupees, it could be 25.179 million, it could be anything. But if we increase the price by 1 percent per unit, then it becomes 25,179 to 25,431. Now, that reflects in the net earnings if we add the differential now uh, between the 25,179 and 25,431, if that differential we add to the net earning, then we have a net earning. So, the percentage increase in price is 1 percent, but the percentage increase in uh, net earning will be a lot more and you can easily calculate this 39, 40 percent increase that will happen in the uh, net earning in this particular case. Similarly, if the uh, price goes down by 1 percent and therefore, uh, we deduct that differential uh, of 24,927 and 25,179 that 1 percent in decrease, we add it to the, uh, we, we deduct it from the net earning and the net earning goes then from 644 to 392 a significant 40 percent uh, decrease. So, 1 percent increase in price and 1 percent decrease in price will reflect in a very magnified form on the net earning. So, that is why when we are we were discussing in the just the end of the last session, we were discussing about adaptive pricing, we were discussing about price negotiation. So, remember that one has to be very careful in the price negotiation that the 1 percent which appears to be so innocuous in the price increase or reduction can mean a very significant change in the uh, net result or the net earning. This triangle represents what we have been discussing in the previous session also that ultimately pricing is a balance of three corners. On one side we have cost that is the kind of usually starting point, but the cost and we have written on top not price we have written their perceived customer value, because ultimately what we are trying to strategize for is not exactly price, but as we discussed that price. Uh, uh, explicit price, implicit price all put together, it is the position in the customer's mind uh, that you are trying to aim for and therefore, we are not calling it price, but we are saying the perceived customer value is in interaction with cost and competition, which so cost at one end, competition at the other end and the perceived customer value at the apex this is the interaction field where price setting happens. So, perceived customer value that perceived customer value can be created through the product, through the service, through promotion, through distribution and all of that all those elements put together create the per customer value perception. Now, customer value can be measured. What is what is the value 
that the customer gives is prepared to give for this particular pair of glasses. Now, one is you can ask the customer directly, but that is something that cannot be done in each and every case and it cannot be, it is not practically possible for many uh, complex products uh, because this is a much more simpler product and which can be directly experienced, but a leisure cutting machine cannot be directly experienced. It will need lot of use for the customer to form an opinion and because there are no benchmarks available for many innovative products often. So, even the customer's perception uh, is uh, not available or not feasible. So, we have some methods like one method is called the dollar metric method or the perceived value analysis multi criteria analysis and we will look at some of the prominent ones uh, to understand that how we do it. So, for example, this dollar metric one I mean the name sounds a, a little bit uh, uh, academic, but actually it is a very simple arithmetic thing that like there are two options here everything we are going to do is in pair wise comparison. This pair wise comparison in pricing strategy or in many kinds of B 2 B strategy plays a very important part that is because as a human being we usually have very difficult lot of difficulty in evaluating that what can be the price of this or what is the value of this. But if we are able to give another similar product and we are able to compare then the customer can form an impression or a decision much more easily that I prefer this as opposed to this and I can give this this much and I can give this this much value and that this pair wise comparison therefore, leads to much more easier and better decision in the customer's mind. Now, in the next slide as you see what we have got is A and B 10 dollars, A and C 13 dollars, A and D 5 dollars we have tabulated that. C and D is 12 dollars, we have tabulated all of that. Now, we can derive from this as relative value between A and D, we can derive as a relative value and that is the calculation which is shown on the right hand side column. That means, we can get give A a value of minus 6, B as a value of plus 5, C a value of 9.3 these are all calculated from that particular that out of the 3 compared A compared to B, C and D what is its composite value. And so, it shows us that if we have A, B, C, D all put together and our preferred valuation then it shows that we can give C 9.3, D will be 8 minus 8.3 and B will be plus 5 and A will be minus 6. So, this is kind of a one way of approaching uh, multiple price options of comparable products, competitive products and where you can position uh, the price of your product. This is one way of doing this, this is the dollar metric method. So, look at the simple step, this is the first step where you just pair wise comparison, you tabulate the chart and then you put it all together and you give arrive at distinctive value for each one of the elements, each one of the options of A, B, C and D. And uh, so, that gives us that in case of A, we are willing to pay versus the least value option, uh, we are willing to pay 2.3 dollars more. So, A is minus 6, D is minus 8.3. So, which means that we are able, we are prepared to pay 2.3 dollars more for A. We are prepared to pay 13.3 dollars more for B and we are prepared to pay 17.6 dollars for C, all this in comparison to D. So, if you are actually a price setter for D, then you will see where you will be able to put your pricing. 
if you have the so once you have the other elements other competitive prices then you can decide that which where we will set your price but a more scientific approach to do this is what you have in front of you now and this is actually we have here this is a multi criteria way of making the that same decision that we discussed uh, just uh, in the previous slides here we are looking taking a chair uh, this could be a uh, you know factory industrial chairs this could be office chairs so we are discussing here in the context of a b2b uh, buying situation so when a person decides to buy a chair then these are the buying criteria usually which you have on the extreme left hand column which is chair design comfort fabric quality fabric design and ease of purchase this is an uh, little of intangible point where the other ones are kind of tangible chair design which is kind of tangible and intangible blending comfort again an intangible point fabric quality again somewhat intangible somewhat tangible and fabric design again a tangible intangible blend so all of these are both quantitative and qualitative elements put together that's why actually the relative judgment uh, becomes uh, very important here now first thing that you do is you ask the customers and say okay customer in their buying decision relative importance or weightage given to each attribute is 20 for design 30 for comfort because it's a chair which we will utilize for long time during the office hours so uh, if you are looking for a chair at the drawing room which will be utilized maybe now and then uh, you know you may go for more for show so they are actually the design element the wow element may actually score above everything else so you may give 40 to tier chair design but here we are looking at a uh, industrial chair or an office chair so comfort has the maximum weightage so comfort is 30 design is 20 fabric quality is 15 fabric design is 15 and ease of purchase again a very important point when it is b 2 b situation uh, uh, suppose has a weightage of 20 all put together we must always add up to 100 so this is how we divide the relative weightage of the various attributes next comes that supplier a on chair design suppose on a scale of 1 to 10 they score 5 as opposed to that the chair design is superior in case of b so they score 7 and c is something in between they score 6 but when it comes to comfort a scores 6 b also scores but much higher level b scores 8 and c scores on comfort uh, a lot lower and they score 4 similarly you can see all the other elements that are tabulated that on fabric quality a is 10 b is 9 c is 8 and so on for design and so on for ease of purchase now if we multiply the relative importance of the attribute with the score obtained by that particular choice then you have a totaling up to 664 that means 20 into 5 is 100 13 to 6 is in case of a i am talking about 13 to 6 is 180 15 into 10 is 150 and if you add up all these elements you come to 664 so in the same way do it for b and it totals up to 820 and c totals up to 580 so by multiple criteria and pair wise comparison we see that between a b and c the preference points are 826 64 and 580 and we can use these imputed 
you can we can use this to impute the price we can we can project the price that will be therefore considered as acceptable value in the customer's mind because 820 of b divided by 664 the percentage you get you can use almost the same percentage to dissect the price of b compared to the price of a and in the same way 820 to 580 you ca it can be the comparison comparative positioning of the price of b with respect to c so this is a the very useful simple straightforward logical and very useful way of measuring value and guiding our pricing strategy in the b2b context ending this particular uh, aspect of pricing therefore we what we are saying is that the price the lower bound of the price so price is actually something that is in between the lower bound which is the cost and the upper bound which is the customer perceived value so between these is what the pricing range is all about because the maximum you can go is what is a customer's perceived value and the minimum you can go is that what is your cost sometimes people go below cost but that is a rare situation and maybe due to some strategic reason you may decide to take some loss in a particular transaction for the sake of continuing relationship or building relationship with a new customer or a strategic customer but that is not the usual situation usual situation is upper bound the perceived value in the customer mind determined by the method that we just now discussed the dollar metric and the multi criteria method that we just now discussed discussed and the lower bound is cost in between is is your pricing arena so between suppose the price is something the line in between as you see here so between the price and the cost is the supplier surplus value and the domain the, the range between or the or the space between customer perceived value and the price is the customer surplus value so obviously the customer will try to maximize this particular gap between the price and the perceived value and the supplier will try to maximize this gap also between the price and the cost the cost of the organization so this is the uh, tussle that goes on and this is the arena of where negotiations happen now we have been discussing about break even etc another important concept that we need to introduce here as one of the underpinning principles of b2b pricing is price elasticity so there are certain products uh, where uh, in the industrial b2b segment some of the consumables or certain items which people will be ready to stock if there are significant price advantages where we have this elastic price that means uh, lower the price higher the quantity so you see here on the left hand side the graph that for a 5 dollar drop in price from 25 dollars to 20 dollars the quantity demand will be almost double from 50 to 100 this obviously this will change because of the slope of the graph but in case of on the right hand side you see a inelastic price here the price drop from 25 dollars to 20 dollars the same 5 dollars which is on the left hand side because of the nature of the inelastic nature of this there will be a only 5 unit growth in the quantity demanded this is the elastic price versus inelastic price so elastic price means quantity demanded will change significantly will change in price 
for the same change in price in inelastic market the quantity demand will be slightly increased or uh, decreased. So, price elasticity of demand P E D is defined as percent change in volume divided by percent change in price. So, suppose price is 100, sales volume is 1000 units. Now, if you look at here that product A change is minus for minus 1 percent, the sales volume becomes 1030 instead of 1000 and therefore, so 1 percent change in price leading to 30 units uh, increase in volume and therefore, we can say 3 percent volume change divided by 1 percent volume price increase uh, price decrease leads us to a price elasticity of demand of uh, price elasticity of demand is minus 3.0. In the same way you see the chart you can apply to in case of B the P E D is minus 0 0.5 in case of product C the price elasticity of demand is minus 0 0.2. So, we can easily calculate therefore, by this formula which is change in price divided uh, change uh, by demand percentage change in volume divided by percent change in price is and this is the tabulation that explains it and this is something that you have to remember very well when you are setting your prices in the B 2 B context that in if it is an inelastic uh, case then a, a change in the a drill bit a certain kind of specialized high speed uh, drill uh, tool a kind of say uh, little unique product or product which are not easily available. 5 percent change in price will not at all affect perhaps the demand. And also as we discussed in the previous session the company has to always also look at competition prices. So, focusing too heavily on competition prices of course, it may devalue or commoditize because you, you are not always marking yourself to the market you may actually become a leader and you may set a price instead of following the price of the competitor. So, that is something that you have to determine that what is your market position and accordingly you have to decide that with respect to competition how you are going to guide your pricing strategy. So, questions that you need to ask therefore, has the competition been raising or lowering prices? How comparable are the various competitive offers? in terms of perceived customer value, how many firms are competing, what are their market shares. So, it is these questions are all related to your position with respect to your competitors. And as we said right in the beginning of this session that segmentation, targeting and positioning these are all related to the pricing strategy to each other. So, Sometimes you can raise your price and therefore, that will be uh, your competition may actually accept you as the price leader and they will also raise prices fine. You lower prices customers the competitors also lower prices fine, but if you raise prices and your competition actually just holds their prices then you are suddenly introducing an uncompetitiveness for your product line. So, these are some things that you need to take care of, but remember in B 2 B market because there are fewer number of players and fewer number of buyers. So, we are discussing looking at not a uh, few to many type of market in B 2 C that there are few manufacturers of soaps and there are millions of buyers possible buyers of soap. Because 
we are not dealing with that kind of market we are looking at market where there are uh, maybe four players as suppliers and there may be 10 players as uh, buyers. So, here uh, these sort of uh, changes usually not not happen too many times because the competitors more or less know who is leading as a who is the market price leader and who are the followers and that sort of sets in. So, this is the nature of what we call the oligopolistic market and most of the many of the B 2 B markets are uh, that characteristic display that characteristic and therefore, we do not see this kind of drastic situation where somebody raises the price and everybody else holds that usually do not happen. Okay. So, I will conclude by this particular slide which is in front of you which is that sometimes as a competitive posture or as a competitive strategy in your pricing you can change play with some non price actions like for example, change your terms of payment, change the basis of competition, change the uh, invest in fixed cost marketing expenditure for example, you may decide to locate a spare parts depot and you can persuade the customer that they can now therefore, save the cost of uh, stocking uh, emergency spares because you will always be available 24 by 7 to supply whenever it is needed. So, certain large plants like metal plants like steel plants, aluminum plants they give value to this kind of proposal from their suppliers uh, in the B 2 B context. And uh, so, these are certain non price st uh, strategies that you can follow if your uh, competitor prices are aggressive. And uh, of course, uh, sometimes you may not decide you may decide not to play. So, that is another. So, that ends our this particular um, set of sessions on B 2 B pricing and uh, depending on your response in the forum, we will see if there are other additional uh, clarifications that are necessary, uh, then we will provide that. Thank you.